Hey everyone, welcome back to another Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and today we're looking at Overwhelm Rod. Uh, really, really fun divining rod deck uh, based around the concept of basically just increasing your deck's consistency to the point where it has so many Overwhelm units that your divining rods always hit at least one to two. Uh, and sometimes even as many as four. Uh, we are really, really trying to get like a very, very focused deck with a ton of Overwhelm units in it. In addition, I have some non-Overwhelm units, which we are getting through other access and just using as finishers to make sure that we have enough high end to win out the game. So very, very greedy, very, very fun. Uh, this deck is pretty simple. It's very similar to the Greed Dragon deck that I often run, the four color deck with Voprex, the... Uh, um, Voprex the Great Ruin, and uh, we will probably show off a list like that at the end of the video. But uh, for now, this is the one that I've been using that's actually been been doing okay on the ladder, and uh, we got ourselves from Diamond 3 to Diamond 2 with it while we were playing on stream for about an hour, so yeah, it seems like it was uh, pretty fun. It seems like it's got a decent enough win rate to be worthy of a, a brew article, so uh, we'll go ahead and talk about it. So the basic idea behind this deck is that we are trying to play down uh, Overwhelm cards, as many as we can, and uh, we will give them car uh, endurance or protect if we can. But uh, most of the time, we're actually going to be trying to play out Copper Hall Elite. Now, when we play these Overwhelm units, uh, we get Health Gain off of Shepherd's Horn, which is a card that says your cards with Overwhelm cost one less. And when you play a card with Overwhelm, you gain three health. Uh, there are a couple of things that are notable about this. The main one being that the Shepherd's Horn works well with Stone Scar Maul and Obliterate, neither of which are in this deck. But in addition, Stone Scar Maul also gives your other spells overwhelm. So if you were to play a Stone Scar Maul, you could then play like all four torches out of your hand for free and gain 12 life off of them. So there are a lot of like interesting interactions with this card. I expect we'll be seeing more interesting brews with it soon. But uh, today I just wanted to slot it into the Greed Dragon, and uh, unfortunately we ended up having to take the dragons out. So, But uh, all the same, Shepherd's Horn is a very, very powerful card, uh, it, or at least in this particular archetype, because it allows you to not only play out cards that you normally wouldn't be able to most of the time, like uh, you can play zero-cost Pyro Knights and then put Divining Rods on them, which is just a glorious turn six, uh, but it also gains you so much health over the course of a game that it allows you to counter or stymie some aggro strategies and quite a few mid-range strategies as well. I've generally found the health gain to be extremely relevant in the deck. The cost reduction is also quite good and allows you to really spam out those Overwhelm units even when you're playing a lot of them. In addition, it also gets you to some of your more expensive Overwhelm units earlier. Lava Blood Goliath is a 9-cost card that you're going to be trying to play pretty frequently, so uh, we decided to opt for something that allowed us to play that as often as possible. Okay, uh, beyond that we have some deck thinning. We're running Seek Power and Find the Way, as well as Secret Pages to play Sigils from our deck depleted and ramp us a little bit. Uh, Find the Way is the big card here. It pulls a lot of power out of our deck. I really recommend Find the Way in any time deck that's trying to get to 8 or 9. Uh, as many as you can get, uh, it's something where you have to sort of measure the loss in tempo versus the value of the card, but this card always effectively draws you two cards while also fixing your power. So it's really important for big control decks. This is a very, very powerful card, and it's often better than Seek Power in some situations. And you know me, I have talked very long and loudly about how Seek Power is the most important card in the game. You really need these cards like Seek Power and Find the Way to make sure that your deck has a stable curve, make sure that you don't get power screwed with any frequency and reduce the chance of getting uh, any sort of issues with power uh, dramatically. So Find the Way is very, very good at doing that. It also fixes for our three colors, which we really, really like. And uh, yeah, it's very, very good at ramping. Beyond that, lots of Overwhelm units. Pyro Knight, Cult Aspirant, which only has one activator here, but we can probably try and find and slot in some more. The health gain off of Shepherd's Horn can be enough to get Cult Aspirant up to a 4-4 or a 5-5. It's not as crazy as most Life Force decks, but it's still a one-drop Overwhelm unit, and we really want those because they allow us to play cards into Divining Rod without getting removed. Uh, anything where we can play a Cult Aspirant on 1 or 0 and then play a Divining Rod on 6, that's something our opponent can't respond bond to, and we can get a lot of value out of it that way. Okay, so the big combo here that's fairly important is we do have a Karya the Liberator in here. Flying, Endurance, Warcry 5, Charge, and Aegis. You'll notice there's no Overwhelm on that card. That's okay. So 
we do want Akaria, and we want to really greed out as many Akarias as we can. Uh, so with all of our fixing, we're able to play this card on 7 pretty easily as a finisher, and that's not bad. This is a really good finisher for a deck that's in 3 colors and has to have red and green in it to get the Overwhelm Access and the Copper Hall Elite, which is a card I'm very fond of, as well as Rise to the Challenge, which allows us to slaughter in a few more Divining Rods. But if we are running Infinite Hourglass, then all of our units have Endurance, which it turns out Ikaria has Endurance. So Ikaria will trigger off of any unit that has a Divining Rod on it. We still only run one infinite hourglass, but we also run Protect, which gives a unit an Aegis. Even if this Aegis is depleted, you can pop Ikaria off of the Aegis. So if you protect something, if you play something, you protect it because your opponent's going to be trying to silence it so that you can't Divining Rod, and then you Divining Rod, uh, you will get Ikaria off the top. But primarily, Ikaria pops off the top of Copper Hall Elite, which in my opinion is the most common target for Divining Rod in this deck because it's the most sticky. It's very, very hard to kill this unit, and uh, yeah, it does really, really well. So, uh, when you are playing this deck, I recommend picking hands that tend to have either Shepherd's Horn or Divining Rod in them. It's pretty easy to get access to power as long as you can get like three power or more. That's typically what you want. So two power and a find the way or some seek power or something like that. And then if you can get Shepherd's Horn or Divining Rod, you have a guaranteed play that's going to give you a ton of value all throughout the game. The actual value of this deck has some limits without Shepherd's Horn or Divining Rod, so getting those removed is very, very uh, bad for you, and you should be a little bit careful careful not to have that happen. We run the new Shatter Glass Mage, that card's very good at killing enemy attachments, and since you're going to be dealing with, well, at least uh, this week, uh, Clock Roaches are in vogue, sorry about that, and uh, we are going to be so setting up a, a lot of attachment destruction. This is also good against like some of the more aggro Rakano decks, things that are trying to like really spiral out of control with very, very big weapons with Warcries on them. Uh, it's good against relics like Xenon Obelisk, it really limits some of the capacity of aggro decks to really overwhelm you. Um, the big risks for this deck, the things that tend to really kill it, are A, getting aggroed out before you have a chance to really play out cards like Shepherd's Horn. If you don't get your Shepherd's Horn, you're going to have a hard time fighting aggro in general, because your cards aren't that defensive, and uh, a lot of good removal can really mess up your day. Uh, it's also possible to get outvalued. Uh, there are very few decks that can outvalue this deck, but since you basically just have a big mid-range spike at 6, which is sometimes 5 with secret pages, uh, it tends to be a little bit tricky to uh, get completely over the head of some decks that have just a huge amount of late game presence, which is to say big clock roaches can occasionally do it. Um, I've seen some Felm decks do that, so like, be careful of those. You want to try and finish the game as fast as possible. You do actually want to press damage against slower control decks because you have all that overwhelm, you're usually okay with trading away your Dawnwalkers, and uh, yeah, things are going pretty well there. Watch out for these Dawnwalkers. They don't actually have that many activators. They're really good to come back, but they only activate off of Amber Monument and Shatterglass Mage, as well as Akaria and Lava Blood Goliath. So there are options, but they're not always available. Uh, Dawnwalkers don't come back from the void as often as you'd like, but I would still say that they're well worth the play, and having a bunch of them can really change the flow of the game for the better when you don't get your rods, and even when you do get your rods, I think that it's just a lot of extra health gained. Uh, the more Dawnwalkers that you have out, the more health you gain off Shepherd's Horn. They give the Dawnwalker health gain uh, every time they come back from the void, so that's really, really relevant. Okay, that's about all that I need to say about it right now. Let's go into a few games, and I'll show you how it works. All right, we got Captain Punky. Uh, looks like he's playing, might be playing Revenge deck, we'll see. I've got two cards plus Seek Find the Way. Lots of early game, which is kind of nice, but I think I still want to try and dig for Horn or Rod. Yeah, I'd say this is a little bit better. I don't get to play Dawnwalkers on three because Find the Way doesn't get a full power, but uh, I can still play Dawnwalkers every turn after that. They're one of the stronger cards in the deck, I think. Hey, Shepherd's Horn, awesome. So now we can play Shepherd's Horn on three and then play Dawnwalkers on four if we draw another power. Good to see some Tranquil Skeller, that card's quite strong. All right. Cool, so now I can play Dawnwalker, so I can start finding the way for other things. 
I'm fine taking damage because Shepherd's Horn just pretty much undoes all that. Very frequently, I would say. Okay, cool, and we even got the uh, Divining Rods, so now we can do a lot of good things. I need to draw an undepleted power to play Divining Rod next turn. I could also try to use that undepleted power to play Copper Hall Elite so I get a better Divining Rod. Overwhelm Valkyrie Enforcer is a bit of a bummer. Hello, Ikaria. Okay, so we're going to grab a green. Play it out. And I will play down a Dawnwalker or a Seraph. I feel like Seraph might be pretty good here, but... And eh, no, let's go Dawnwalker. And I'm happy to attack for four here, force him to block. It's better than him attacking with an overwhelm unit and me having to block. Okay. So we'll see if we see another Valkyrie Enforcer. If we do, that's fine. Throne Warden. Big dude. A lot of value in him. Ah, no Relic Weapon to destroy, but Shattered Glass Mage does seem tempting here just to draw the card. Copper Hall Elite might be a little bit better since then I can play Divining Rod, and I really like Divining Rod here. But then I don't get to draw this. Or then I, you know, then this goes, like, I have to draw this and I can't draw something else. So it's a card draw versus a Copper Hall Elite. I think I want to save this because I feel like there's going to be a big relic weapon like Staff of Stories soon, so we're going to go ahead and play Copper Hall Elite. And Knight Chancellor Seraph. And end my turn. If he wants to attack me, I can double block the Throne Warden. But yeah, if you're playing Throne Warden, you're probably playing some relic weapons like Auric Runehammer. Attacking for just three. Kothon the Far Watcher. Yet more armor. Let's do the thing. All right, what do we hit? Nothing, nothing, and a Shattered Glass Mage and a Reinarch, not bad. All right, so I can attack for seven with this guy. That seems perfectly reasonable. Get rid of the Throne Warden at the very least. Potentially provoke a Harsh Rule. And it's possible he'll try to outfly me, but uh, I can actually push through with my Overwhelm units now, so Harsh Rule might be in his best interest. We want Harsh Rule to be in his best interest at this point, I would say. Silencing CRF, not that big a deal. I'm probably just going to attack with her. I actually am more interested in uh, other things at this point. Doing with everything. We can play Shattered Glass Mage to get a Dawnwalker back. Yep, lots of pushing. Lots of damage. Seems like the Overwhelmed Valkyrie should die. And I'll play Shattered Glass Mage as a defender. I don't know, my board's looking pretty okay, so we can probably just stay put. I mean, once he gets his Owl, things get a little bit worse, but... I'm still gaining a lot more health than he is, so... Alright, so he decided to go for the Owl. I have a Karia. Who I have a very cheap Lava Blood Goliath. Happy to attack with these two. Looks good. Yeah, I'll probably play Shattered Glass Mage here. I don't know, it's tricky. It's 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 not a bad card to just hold on to for the moment. And it does mean that I don't get to activate, um... But yeah, we'll play it. 
Gain ourselves three health, get another overwhelm unit to push through. Primal Sigil. Nothing he's generated so far is too scary. He could, like, uh, channel the Tempest something in mine. And I'd rather he channel the Tempest something in mine than go for my face, so... Okay, Tranquil Scholar is not a terribly useful card for him. Got Lifesteal on it, though, which is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and put Divining Rod on the Shatter Glass Mage. And we got a Lava Blood Goliath, so we're going to pick a unit. I'm going to go ahead and say the 3-3. Three, three. Eh, maybe the Lifesteal. Nah, the 3-3. Three, three. Pop the Aegis, which is great. Swing with everything, because I can. And we got a lot of damage to push through. Another Island's Choice, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So now we just need a power to play Lava Wood Goliath, or we can play Akaria. Um, we are obviously way ahead on health total, so that's all good. Oh, I could wait on Akaria, I guess. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Or, yeah, Siroth can actually play out value, which is really good. Fine with this, we can kill Kothon. No longer taking chip damage. And I've got Lava Blood Goliath to gain health and deal damage, or... Yeah, probably just seal up the game that way. Walk there, we'll see if I get a harsh rule. All right, cool. We got it. Here we are up against Furax. A uh, seat of progress plus seat of impulse. Copper Hall Elite. Uh, no, we don't want to keep this hand. We want to go for... Try to find that Divining Rod or Shepherd's Horn. This is similarly not great, but... Might be able to make something happen. It's gonna be pretty <laughs> pretty rough going against a uh, life gain deck because this deck can really get out of control very quickly. Yeah, Oasis Seeker comes down. And I don't have a lot of removal here. We tend to play very greedy, so we'll just time schedule, search for uh, fire. Divining Rod might be able to hold the fort. Um, but like, if Katras start coming down, this deck is very, very good at outvaluing, so it's going to be a little tricky. Alright, play a Fire, play a Dawnwalker, and whether to focus on Oasis Seeker or Cult Aspirant is really tricky. I think Cult Aspirant is kind of necessary at this point, so we'll grab that one first. Oh, my opponent knows that too, so doesn't even attack with it. Next up. Copper Hall Elite. And then Amber Monument brings back Dawnwalker, which is really useful. I think we've still got some potential here. Beckoning Lumens drawing cards. So let's go ahead and play a Justice Sigil into an Amber Monument. That'll give us some defense. Choosing not to attack here. Getting lots of card value. So we'll go ahead and go for Seraph. Play a time, find the way for some more red. We're gonna want to play all of that. I actually should have played the Depleted Fire there so that I could easily get a Karya if I needed to. So he's still got some routes to lifesteal. Extract's a pretty good one. And it looks like he's mostly going for face. Aegis here, that's fine. We'll play Shatter Glass Mage just to have another blocker. And I'll play the Depleted Fire Sigil, of course. 
next turn I can either play a Justice and activate Seraph, or I can play a Fire and play Ikaria if I draw her. Cool. Happy to block that. So Furox's deck is stalling out pretty well. It hasn't drawn Katra, which is the big issue card, if we have the, that issue. And I'm going to get Seraph activation, so we do have some late game potential that's going to be pretty good for us. Oh, Tioko! Hey, buddy! Uh, you're excellent. I really like you here. Let's give all of my stuff double damage and charge, please. Akaria the Liberator, I think Tiogo's actually better here. Pretty sweet. That's actually my first Diogo activation of Omens. Um, so we'll go ahead and end my turn. Yeah, Katra's an issue. A really big issue, I would say. <laughs> All right, uh, so Lava Blood Goliath kills Cult Aspirant or Katra, probably Katra here. And then we'll just attack for six with Overwhelm and charge. And double damage. <laughs> All right, not a particularly representative sample of the deck, but it does demonstrate an alternate win condition. CRF is a powerful option if you can't stick a Shepherd's Horn or a Divining Rod. All right, here we are in game three or so. Uh, this is, hmm. There's no red here, which kind of is needed to play the cards, but there's a Shepherd's Horn. I think I can't keep this hand because I don't have any playable cards other than the Shepherd's Horn, which is very sad because Shepherd's Horn is great. Um, I think I will redraw though, because I'm not guaranteed to hit a Secret Pages or a Find the Way. So we'll redraw here, try and find something better. Still got the Shepherd's Horn. This time we're on two power, which is kind of the stinker. You really don't want to get two power on the mulligan, um, but uh, that's why we have Find the Way, that's why we have Seek Power, that's why we have Secret Pages, so that this happens very infrequently. And uh, with any luck, we won't have to do a Come From Behind. Okay, just give me a power. Come on, deck. Okay, so I've got everything I need uh, as long as I draw power. Shepherd's Horn is super solid. I can rise the challenge for the thing I need. Secret pages, that's really good. I can play that before Shepherd's Horn so that I can just play like a bunch of other stuff, but I do need to actually get, yeah, there we go, Seed of Impulse. Okay, so next turn is gonna be tricky. This is Revenge Roaches, which uh, if you don't know what this deck is, uh, we, we have a video up on it already, so. Uh, it's called Grief Roaches. Um, hmm. I don't need to defend myself against the early setup so much as the late setup, so I think I'm going to play the Amber Monument. End my turn, and we're going to Secret Pages for a green. Then we play Shepherd's Horn into Copper Hall Elite, and we play Divining Rod after that. Grief Roaches isn't likely to have an answer to such an early amount of value, so that should really do us pretty well. Twinning Rituals on Crown, that's not good, especially since he twinned and echoed units, so it's got to be the Clockroaches, but okay, so I need to end this game fast. If I don't finish with a very good Divining Rod pull, um, then it's going to be hard to beat this. I can Shatter Glass Mage the Crown of Possibilities, but that's no guarantee. All right, Shepherd's Horn. I can't play the Aegis unit this turn, but I can play Seraph, Dawnwalker, and Pyro Knight. So I'll play Dawnwalker and Pyro Knight. The good news is that I can hold out pretty well against the Roaches. Uh, I cannot block the 4-4 Quick Draw, and Quick Draw is a pretty bad skill to be started with because it means he can just continually aggro my face. I will probably block here. Yeah, I'm risking Lightning Storm either way, so I'll block there. The Roaches have Revenge. 
If I draw a power here, life is good. If I don't, uh, things get a little weird. But I'll still be able to play CRF Copper Hall Elite and get a good start on things, I would say. Might even be better to play CRF Copper Hall Elite at this point. There's no discount on the clock roaches, so that's his only roach for the turn. I don't like Whispering Wind here. Happy to attack for two. We want to push some amount of damage uh, since we're going to be taking a bunch, but we mostly want to give it all back. And there's not really a defense against this setup. Nice! Traded with the Whispering Wind, which means he doesn't get to do his discards. And then Divining Rod should hopefully spiral things out of control. As long as he doesn't get like a killer roach, we should be okay for a bit. I also have Rise to the Challenge for a second rod, so that's really good. Revenge Quick Draw. Revenge Quick Draw. That's pretty tough. All right, here we go. Shatter Glass Mage hits. That wrecks the crown. We gain a bunch of life, so Cult Aspirant is active and ready to rock. And I can't attack with this unless I want to run it into a 7-7, which I don't just yet. So now I've got some available blockers. I've got a decent amount of life gain. I'm pretty sure he can't do anything with this. Does that have revenge? It does. Does this have revenge? It does not. So maybe just block the one without revenge. And we'll throw Dawnwalkers in front of the other ones. Okay, if he's going to swear vengeance, that's also going to work. So now I am definitely running the clock on the revenge roaches, which is fine. We sort of expect to do that. Not all of these have quick draw, which is good. Infinite Hourglass, rise to the challenge. We get another Divining Rod, we play Seed of Impulse. And now it's all about blocking and setting up a big defense. Okay, dang, he got his Revenge Destiny Roaches. So he might overvalue us. My Divining Rods can only blow up those Roaches. Cult Aspirin's going to be a big rock star here. The more of those I can run, the better off I am. None of these roaches are going to get anything bigger than quick draw, so the bigger that I can get them, the better off I am. Happy to block one of them. Take seven here. And we get that Dawnwalker back, so life should be fine on that front. Whispering Winds whatever. We're going to have a Karya for that. I would prefer not to have that happen, but... Shattered Glass Mage doesn't do anything here, so we'll Divining Rod, and also we get the Shattered Glass Mage, so. Okay, damage an enemy. Which enemy? Let's go with one of the Quick Draw Roaches. We did hit a Karya. That's really good. Cult Aspirant is active. That's also really good. This is a 12-10, which seems pretty sweet. And I can attack with Akaria to get some value. I think we might be good. We're good in the air. Dawnwalker's getting us health back, and we're getting lots of Dawnwalker triggers. We have five damage in the air every turn. We have decent answers to the current roaches. The revenge roaches are a big deal, but uh, if he attacks too much, then we can just crack back and beat him out. So this is going to be a tense round, but it's uh, I think it might be in our hands. There's still ways we can lose this. But it's hard to get rid of Akaria for roaches. Roaches don't deal that well with just big stuff. Okay, Dawnwalker. Swing for five. Lava Blood Goliath pushes and kills the one two, which is nice. Nice. Divining Rod on this guy. I think third trigger should probably do him in. Eh, it didn't do a lot, but it did some. So now I think I can attack all in. I'd have to count here. 20, 35, 41, 44, uh, 49. That's 33, then 37. 
no, 33, 37, yeah, so 33, 7 on the ground, or 37 on the ground versus 12, uh, 18, 25 plus 8 is how much? 25 plus 8 is uh, 33, so I can deal 4 damage in if I attack all in. I can probably do more than that because he's only got so many blockers. At the very least, I can get three of these guys in. My three lowest, which is three, four. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus actual overwhelm. Oh, yeah, that's definitely lethal, I think. Because he has to block five of them. And the 20 damage one is just, like, it's going to require all of his... Yeah, so we, we have way more than enough. So I just swing with everything, and uh, that should win the game. I was counting it all as like a big glob, because I assumed you'd be able to block in a big glob, but in reality I'm going to get three guys through unblocked, and everyone gets, like, there's no defense, so. He just has to pit his biggest guys against my biggest guys. Some of them aren't going to get damaged through, the 6-6 six, six in particular, but that is lethal. Alright! And that is the Dividing Rod deck. So, uh, yeah, pretty fun times. Let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. So as you can see, that deck's not infallible. You can definitely run into some issues with some of the later late game stuff. It's as greedy as it can possibly be, but it also can't outgreed some of my other greedy brews. Um, so like it does does okay nonetheless. Uh, I really like this deck. I think it's really a lot of fun. Uh, this deck originated from my Greed Dragon brew, which uh, I have old YouTube videos up of it, and uh, we also have a version of it up for you to enjoy. Uh, I was playing it for color for a while, and then I realized that uh, the addition of many Overwhelm units and Overwhelm enablers uh, unfortunately only supports the colors that aren't shadow, so I ended up having a deck with just four Voprex in it and uh, no other stuff. This is the much greedier version. It has really, really good Divining Rods. Voprex the Great Ruin is hilarious to hit off of a Divining Rod, but uh, I've generally found that uh, without the ability to play Voprex frequently. Like, I was just decreasing the reliability of the deck. Nonetheless, I really like this version, so if you want to play Greedy Dragon, this is a great way to use Voprexes. And uh, indeed, you can probably modify the deck to go away from, like, the Acarias and the green stuff and be just, like, a red-yellow-purple deck. Champion of Chaos has Overwhelm. There are a couple of other units in Shadow that have Overwhelm. Uh, so if you wanted to play Voprex off the top instead of Acaria, uh, that's another thing that you can sort of build around. I encourage people to experiment. Uh, rod decks are always really fun, and it's a really fun mechanic. So uh, give it a shot. Anyways, uh, see you guys next time. Feel free to like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, have a really good night. Cheers, everyone.